As Narain grew older, he took more interest in reading books and did not play games so much. Narain became interested in the problems of religion and the question which troubled him most was whether there is a god or not, whether anyone had seen him. He visited many religious leaders for an answer to this question, but none could satisfy his doubts. Gradually, he had lost faith in many of the teachings of Hinduism. He did not know what to believe. One day, he decided to visit Sri Ramakrishna, who was a great Hindu saint. Sri Ramakrishna said that we can see and speak to God just as we see and speak to our friends. At the touch of Sri Ramakrishna, Narain lost consciousness and he could not understand what had happened. He had a strong body and mind, but this saint could do with him whatever he liked by a mere touch. He could not explain how it happened. However, he understood that Sri Ramakrishna was no ordinary person. He came to have deep respect for him, though there were still many unanswered questions in his mind. Sri Ramakrishna said, If you do not accept my views, why do you come to me? Narin replied, I come because I love you, but that does not mean that I will accept your words without thinking for myself. Instead of being annoyed, Sri Ramakrishna was pleased to hear this. He was glad that Narin was so independent minded and eventually Narin became his most favorite. Sri Ramakrishna was confident that Narin would someday become a great man. He knew that he could never do anything wrong. And Sri Ramakrishna began to prepare Narin for the work he was to do later. But the end came all too soon. On 16th August 1886, Sri Ramakrishna passed away. After that, Narin took the monastic vows of Sanyasa. And when people speak of him, they often call him Swamiji. Then Swamiji went to Banaras and many other places and then wandered through the Himalayas. Many things happened to Swamiji while he was wandering, some good and some bad. Swamiji next went to Madras where many intelligent young men became his enthusiastic followers. At this time, the Maharaja of Khetri invited Swamiji to visit his capital and suggested that he take the name Vivekananda. Swamiji accepted this name and for the rest of his life he was known as Swami Vivekananda. Swamiji had worked hard throughout his life. Now the tired child slept in the lap of mother on 4th July 1902. His life was finished but his work goes on. His call to his countrymen was, Arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. His countrymen did hear his call. A great awakening began in the country followed by a period of intense activity. Many people trace India's independence directly to the great movement that began after Swami Vivekananda.